Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about simple code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what are your tricks to keep your code simple and readable? Mm, I'm gonna say to get to know my coworkers and to keep my code disposable. That's what I'm gonna say. So usually I say the KISS um, principle is the way to go, keep it simple stupid. Uh, that's number one of course, but uh, at the same time, you know, just keeping something simple, what does that actually mean? Uh, it's actually very difficult uh, and it's extremely relative. That's why I'd like to say at the same time that what's very important and you've probably heard me say this a few times in you know in code reviews videos and things like that where i talk about that you first and foremost should always include your coworkers before you make any major decisions or before you code too, too far or something like that and the reason for that is one part of course that that gives you early feedback because early feedback is the best but it also gets you to a point where you start to understand the sort of coworkers that you're dealing with. Because the problem with having like these tricks, like these generic rules for how to make code simple, is that at the end of the day, what makes something simple or difficult is really down to the observer. I mean, walking is a difficult thing if you're, you know, a toddler and it's the same sort of thing with software development that's why i tell people like that's why net functional programming will never ever 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 probably at the very least become a thing like or like a mainstream thing it simply is co more complicated to comprehend for the average software developer than object oriented programming not saying that there's nothing simpler it's probably there are probably simpler i mean for me i have uh, thoughts on that as well but the simplicity of code is very relative and so why I argue that it's better for you to get to know your coworkers and what they prefer it really is down to that because uh, I've met many software developers who are really good and they start pulling out all, all their fancy tricks and uh, then the code base turns to shit because they fail to account for the fact that they are not the only people are going to touch this code. I actually had an argument not that long ago with a coworker who uh, he had made some choices uh, on behalf of before I joined the company and then I joined and uh, it was put in like a lead position type of thing and I looked at the work that he had done and we talked about it and he was very proud and he said yeah I've been using this framework and this and that library etc etc and I said yeah it's great you've done a great job but unfortunately we're probably gonna have to remove this framework and switch to this one instead and he looked at me like I just had insulted him because of course this well, had he had given, as he said, I have given this a lot of thought. And I said, yes, uh, you have. But the problem is that I've actually talked to your junior co-workers and they all feel very uncomfortable with this framework. And when I ask them how it works, like these things, that is part of the framework, how does that work? They all say, though, I don't really know. Uh, you should ask. Uh, they told me that I should ask you how it works. That's a problem. That's a big problem because that basically means that you're the only person in the team who knows how the system works. And if I have to s choose between letting you, you let you know using something that only you feel comfortable with where you feel like this has been like that this is working and having the entire team feel comfortable touching the code that we all own as a collective, I'm going to go with the collective. Uh, so that's what's probably going to happen. Uh, he was not very happy with that, but it illustrates my point. Uh, the reality, guys, is that no software company can scale on a single developer. It is not possible. And this is the guru's dilemma. If you are a super talented software developer, you have to understand that what is simple to you is probably not so simple to the rest of the world. Because you are good. You're really good at what you do. But not everybody is good. 
and unfortunately no matter how angry you get that does not change it's the same thing as being like a fitness person running around with a bunch of you know overweight people you can get as angry as you want they're still not going to be able to keep your pace and if the goal is for you as a collective to make it into the make it to the finish line it doesn't matter if you pass the finish line 20 hours before everybody else you're still going to lose and so your best move in that scenario is either to switch groups or like go to somewhere else and work or do the thing that I prefer to do and that is to coach coach the people into better practices in order for you to do that you have to get to know them you have to know your people and you have to understand where they are currently it's the same thing I tell juniors or like mid-levels who are philosopher programmers they, because it's really really easy to go into any company and just as I like to say you you watch you, you w go into the company and look at the code base and you look at it as if this thing just became the way it is through magic like someone designed a shitty system and that's not what, I, what happens guys systems develop over time some systems come before other systems and some compromises are made before other compromises and so as I like to say software development is exactly like growing a garden or a tree or something like that it's not just one unit that just magically spawns out of nothing it starts as a small thing and it grows more and more complicated over time and in order for you to make that a sustainable thing you have to have gardeners or people who can kind of trim the things that go too far out there and make sure that you have a healthy garden or a healthy tree or something like that and that is the role that or that's the mindset that you have to keep in order to keep your code simple because at the end of the day as I said simple really comes down to who's gonna work on this thing and there's always a balance between talented software developers and simple code even the best coders in the world will fail if the system is too advanced it doesn't matter how good they are and so you have to find this balance between hiring really good people and creating solutions that are stable I mean you can't have one or the other you have to have both and finding that balance that is the trick to creating simple software and then lastly, as I said, uh, I be firmly believe that uh, disposable code is the best code that there is. And what I mean by disposable, disposable code is basically that if you write or implement anything in any system, your first thought should always be, how easy would it be for me to throw this away or change it or you know, move things around if I did this? If the answer is, yeah, it would probably take five minutes to change this, then you don't have to give so much thought to what you're doing because the cost of undoing is very cheap. If this answer is, yeah, this would probably be really difficult uh, to change or something like that, you give that thing two or three or four or 15 more thoughts and you go, it, or go over it with other people so that you know that this is in line with the overall direction of the company because if a system, if something is easy, a piece of software or like a system or something like that is easy to plug and, and like remove or things like that, that's one of the reasons, one of the benefits of say microservices in a large ecosystem or so forth. If that piece can be removed or added as on a need ba need, on an as needed basis, it's low risk. But if it's the, as I like to call it, the backbone of the system, the backbone feature, where everything else is connected to that thing, then that thing has importance that spans years, most likely. And if that thing is not good, everything else rots with it. And therefore, it should, if at all possible, you should never put yourself in a situation where you bet so much on one single concept that you cannot replace it if needed. So what I want you to take away from this is that my tips for writing code that is simple and readable is that first and foremost you need to know your people. Simple and readable is really down to peer reviews and public opinion in any team that you find yourself in. So get to know your coworkers, get early feedback, create an open environment where and this is I do this all the time. I have juniors who are usually scared shitless of even talking to me. And it is if, if I want to be sure that this system will live a healthy life, I have to build trust and comfort with these people. 
they're always going to be a little bit intimidated, but they have to feel comfortable criticizing my code. So it's, I mean, guys, I've done things like actually deliberately written something that is not so nice and just to see if they're going to say something. And if they do, we talk about it and I commend them for saying that this was shit code, Frederick. It was really bad. And if they don't tell me something, I ask them, why didn't you comment on this thing here? Because I think this is really horrible. And then we have a talk about it because we, we have to be comfortable working with each other. Because if I'm on vacation or if I make a mistake or something like that, I have to trust that my coworkers are going to tell me that something isn't good. And so that's the first thing. Make sure that you get to know the people you are writing code with so that they feel that the code that you are writing is simple and readable because with them, without them, the system is definitely going to be, become complicated. Second thing is write disposable code. Always ask yourself, it's like if you think about the undo button. If you take an action, how easy it would it be for you to undo it? If it's really easy to undo it, if you if something doesn't go so well, you just remove it immediately, then it's a fairly safe thing to do. If that is not the case, try to figure out why and make sure that you give your features the attention that they deserve before you commit to something that might have long spanning effects. Have a great day.